more armor testing. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I hope this video finds you guys as well, because to be completely honest, I'm not doing so great today. And I'm not doing so great because I'm disappointed. The reason I'm disappointed is because I did a video a few weeks ago on the economics of armor, and it's clear to me from reading the comments on that video as well as some other social networking pages that my point was completely lost on people. And what I said was that, in my opinion, I don't think ceramic armor is worth the money. And the internet lost its ever living mind. What they didn't listen to was that I don't think it's worth the money in relative comparison to other products that are out there on the market. And my point is that for the unit of money and performance and weight, when you, when you put all that stuff together, there's just better products out there than, than ceramic armor. So what we're going to be doing today is actually testing this guy right here. This is from RMA Armor. You guys have seen them on the channel before. And the product that you've seen before is actually a ceramic plate that I suggest. And the reason that I suggest that piece of armor is because it lies outside the standard cost continuum. Their ceramic armor, level four ceramic armor, is relatively cheap in comparison to a lot of products out there that wear it to the, to the point it competes with steel armor. So what we're going to do in today's video is we're actually going to be comparing that level 4 plate, an old one that we've already got bullet holes in, <laughs> and this piece of armor right here. This is their SRT plate. And to describe that, this is a special threat plate, which means that it's good for 7.62 by 39 556 308 things like that. So to be straight up and honest, if you're rolling into the trailer park to investigate uh, a meth house or something like that, and some dude walks out with no teeth and a M1 Grand, you should be somewhat concerned. Because if he vibe checks you with a 30 odd six arm piercing round, you're probably gonna have a bad day. This is not rated for that sort of stuff. This is rated for more of your common calibers, all handgun calibers. In fact, this is listed as 3A plus here on the back, right? So if somebody walks out with an SVD, you're gonna, not a good day. So not only is this piece of armor lightweight and neutrally buoyant, so if you fall in the water wearing it, it's not like you got two rocks or two pieces of steel keeping you from floating. To test that, I've got it here in the carrier. And what we're gonna do is, this carrier's already been shot once so we don't feel bad about it. <laughs> we're gonna analyze the performance of a round that this armor is rated for, striking this, what does it do to the carrier versus what does it do and what will you experience if you're wearing a piece of ceramic armor, which is the main argument that people make, rightfully so in my opinion, against unshielded steel cord ammo. But they'll say, hey, yeah, use a, use a piece of ceramic, which in my opinion makes absolutely no sense and is just intellectually dishonest. We're starting off, we have XM193, our stand-in for that is going to be the Fioki 223A 55 grain that we normally shoot here. So, we're going to put us round into that and see what it does. Looks like we got an impact. That's where we went in. Uh, there's definitely a little bit of a bulge. How about there. on the uh, back? Yeah. Feel anything? Feel anything? Yeah, you can feel it's a little raised up. Let's see what the plate looks like. Not dropping it in the soup here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, front. Little bit of a bulge. You're probably not gonna be able to see that on camera. Back, you can probably see that one. Yeah, I can see that. So we got a little bit of a bulge there. Now, let's compare that. This was the shot plate, which you should be able to see. Now, we are going to put the no another new plate in. We're gonna step it up. All right, guys, we're back. We've got some M80 ball here. We're gonna step it up against the uh, SRT plate. We're gonna see what kind of shrapnel or whatever we get out of it. I don't know, we're gonna find out. Um, Kurt. Yeah. Did we zero this before? You're kidding, there's right? There's no there's no optic on it. No. It's not zeroed. <laughs> Why okay. Why would we? All right. All right, guys. So we're going to try we're going to try and hit this. I don't We got some AliExpress sites or something. I don't know what that is. All right. Totally not name brand. <laughs> so. yeah, I, was, I was looking for Magpul. I was like, wait nope, a minute. Nope. That's not Magpul. No, they're they're rip-offs. <laughs> It came in some other thing. You were in luck. That looked like an Did impact. I seriously just hit that? I think you hit it. <laughs> this is our impact that we just shot with the M80. Uh, substantially bigger bulge here. Again, with the way the camera is, I don't know that you're going to be able to see it, but it's there. Now, back hole. <laughs> so, we should do some back face deformation testing on this, is what you're saying? <laughs> Let's see what it looks like. I guarantee you see it now. Okay, front which again from straight on uh you might notice it but if you look at the side 
you're definitely going to see that, I would say. It stopped it. It stopped it for sure, but it's got a nice half baseball size uh, deformation. And now let's compare that. I'm not sure which way to hold. A little bit, uh, a little bit different. So now we are going to stick a level four ceramic in here and we're going to do the same thing and we're going to see how bad it is. So here we go. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Here it is. So let's shove this bit bad boy in here. Now, it <laughs> yeah. has been hit. With a 338 Lapua. With a 338 Lapua. So let's get that out of the way because I know somebody's going to be like, hey, wait a minute, there's already a shot. Yes, that's not what we're doing here. It's going to stop it. We know that. All right, guys, we're back. We got our 308 again. We are going to shoot that ceramic plate and see what kind of spawn we get out of it. I saw something, but I'm afraid that you may have hit where we were. So let's go take a look. <laughs> I was holding way over. Yeah, let's just go take a look All and right. see what happens. Shockingly enough, I hit it. And I hit it in the right place, which for me is impressive. Um, anyway, our entry is in this jumbled mess here, which you're not going to be able to see, I don't think. But anyway, um, we got a bunch of little holes all over the place. We got a piece of ceramic right there coming out. There she is. Oh, that's a good one. Yep, that's a good one. That's a real good one. Yeah, so you can see, kind of, oh, I just knocked another piece off. Devastation, right? Now, did it stop it? Yes, it did. It's a level four plate, it stopped it. So, let me put my working gloves on here. I don't really want to cut my hands up in the name of science today. Yeah, all right. That's actually not as bad as I thought it'd be. But anyway. It looks to me like a lot of it blew out this. Yeah. Because they're close enough together. I didn't hit directly there though, so. No, yeah, no, yeah. Let's go me. It did not go through. We've got a definite bulge, but yeah. Lots and lots of spawning came out of that from the ceramic breaking apart. Now in comparison, let me grab poly plate for a little bit of a side-by-side -side here so let me preface this by saying these are obviously two different kinds of armor they're for two different tasks so front entry back face quite a bit worse on this one which you can see uh, this is definitely there if you look at the carrier it has definitely exploded all over the place now is something a little bit different the one that we originally shot with 556 and I've got some M855, which this is not rated to stop, but we're gonna shoot it anyway, and we're gonna see what happens. Green tip, and uh, we're gonna see if the plate stops it. Why not? We got it, so let's shoot it. Hey, uh, still just one? Give us three. Three, he says. Bold of you to assume that I can hit it three times. <laughs> Put them in different spots. <laughs> oh, even bolder of you to assume. <laughs> So, the big reveal, uh, it did not. It did not stop it. All three went through. One, two, three. Hopefully that is in frame. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're I'll good get a close-up. You guys can see that. Um, now, let me stress again before I even take this thing out. This plate is not rated for m 855s It is not. Okay? Keep that in mind. This has already been shot. We just had the ammo, and we <laughs> wanted to see what was going to happen. This is science. This is science. We found out what was going to happen. How bad it is here, which actually, I mean, from the front. There's a piece of jacket that just fell out. Oh. Yeah. I didn't uh, see don't, it. don't search for yeah, it. Yeah, forget see it. it. Okay. So let me get my hits right. One, two, three with the M855. And there you go. Clean through. Bam, bam, bam. Like I said, clean through the carrier. The other side, we have a steel plate in here just to catch anything. And it definitely caught it. Now we know. That something that's not rated for M855 did not stop M855. Well, this is the part of the video where I roll in and say something along the lines of, "Well, the results speak for themselves, boys and girls." Video over. While they do, I don't. I don't think that it really demonstrate the extent that I expected to see. So, if you remember back to the previous test on this, on the ceramic armor that we used for today's comparison. We shot that stuff with 7.62 by 54 and 338 Lapua. And while 338 Lapua is substantially more powerful than 308, 7.62 by 54 not really. And the results from that test were much more violent. <laughs> so, and you might say, well, Kurt, no, 7.62 by 54 is more powerful. Yes, it is, but it's not, it's not orders of magnitude more powerful, which is what we saw in that video. 
And you're like, well, Kurt, you were, you were a lot closer in that previous video. Yes, we were, but Again, we weren't orders of magnitude closer. <laughs> we shot the ones in today's video, we shot at 20 yards, and the ones that we shot in that video, we shot at 20 feet. So we're not inside the dynamic window where the muzzle report would displace any material or anything like that. We weren't right up at point blank range or anything like that. And all, for all intents and purposes, the velocity of the projectile is the same at 20 feet as it is at 20 yards. So the negligible difference between the velocity at those two points. So that's not really it. But the two factors I think do really matter are the fact that remember in this test, the plates were suspended from a carrier that was able to free spling and that allows it to dissipate some energy because the whole system can move. Whereas in the previous test, it was up against a block of clay so we could measure back face deformation, which we did not do in today's video. If you guys want to see that and sound off down below, maybe we'll do that for the SRT plates. But then the other thing is again, the plate had already been impacted by a sizable round and ceramic plate works through a variety of mechanisms, but one of the things that's really important is that the material itself has some strain in the lattice, as in its structure. Kind of like glass, but not nearly as bad as glass. You see somebody pop like a, a car window or something like that and it just shatters into a million pieces. Or you've seen the, uh, whatever those those teardrop things are, I, they're eluding my, my mind right now. I'm gonna have to look that up, it's gonna bother me. Prince Rupert's drops, that's the term that I was looking for. So if you if you look at a Prince Rupert's drop and you grab hold of its tail and go like that, the whole thing blows up. A piece of ceramic armor is obviously not that bad, but it's still got a fair amount of stress in there. And it's actually a quality that we, that we want in the armor. And how that stress is generated is a semi-solid material that is then superheated to dry it. And in the process, it changes dimension. Well, when a high velocity projectile comes in and strikes that piece of armor, that armor wants to come apart because it's already stressed. You take a ceramic plate and smash it on the ground, it's gonna crack. So in doing so, that bullet is gonna come in and try to dump energy into the system and the system is going to come apart. It's going to increase its entropy and in doing so, it's gonna take a whole lot of energy with it. And therefore, that's gonna dissipate energy away from you, the person who is wearing it. So I know that we're talking about this in terms of a a good thing and a bad thing in the same video, but what I'm trying to say is that we should have seen a lot more. But because this whole thing has been compromised previously, because it's got little tiny microscopic cracks all over it, it wasn't quite as prolific as it would have been if it was a brand spanking new plate. So you could, you should expect to see more damage, more high velocity spall coming out in the form of ceramic shards than we did in our video today. That said, that's a trade-off that you personally have to make when you're shopping for armor. Which type do you want to go after? Do you want a level four plate that can stop heavier projectiles, but the trade-off is that you're going to generate a whole bunch of razor blades flying around, some of which are large enough and have enough mass to lacerate an artery, and then small enough to be able to be breathed in and get lodged in your alveoli? Or do you want to go with a poly plate that has a lower rating, Although there are some poly plates out there that are rated for level four, but they're not nearly as light as the ones that we talked about today. Do you want to go with the lower rating and not have to worry about those other things? Now to close out, the poly armor that we tested today, which I'm going to refer to as special threat level, is really an enhanced pistol plate. And when you're talking about shopping for armor, that's how you should think of that. Is It's a piece of pistol armor that has been upgraded to handle small rifle threats. So if you're talking about a plate that you wanna stack up against full length rifles, this is not your plate. That's not what it's designed for. It's designed for handling low caliber rifles like 7.62x39 and 5.56 standard ball ammunition. It is not made for 30 odd six armor piercing, right? It is not made to do that and it's clearly not rated for 8.55. It's a plate that's designed around buoyancy and mobility with protection for those lower threat levels that you would expect to see in particular environments. So if that's something that you're looking for specifically, then that's your plate. But if you're looking for something that's capable of stopping those heavy mos and the rounds or something like that, that just isn't your thing. And that's an unrealistic expectation to be running around with something as lightweight as this plate. 
and be able to stop those types of rounds. It just, while there are poly plates that exist that can do this, some of which we have covered previously on this channel, they're substantially heavier than the plate that we saw in today's video. So those are all things that you should consider. And again, if you're interested in any offerings in today's video, then there will be discount codes and affiliate links over on the VSO Affiliates page for you guys to use as you see fit. So thank you all for tuning in today. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and that you learned something. And of course, special thanks to our Patreon and Subscribestar supporters that make videos like today's possible. You should see some names of those people on screen right now.